In this video, we're going to look at PVSOL Premium 2022. PVSOL Premium helps you to simulate the PV system so that you can determine if it fulfills the customer's requirements. Looking at the main page, you'll see a number of icons on top. Each icon represents a step in the simulation process. The first step is where you enter your project data. Project data will end up on the report. Here you can enter customer details, contact persons, address details, images, etc, etc. So for now, I've just entered the customer's address. Moving to the next step, you can either click on the little arrow on the left hand, or you can click on the actual icon. The next icon is where we set up the system type, the climate and the grid. The top left is where you set up the type of system. From the drop box, you can select a number of different system types. Starting off with a simple grid connected PV system with no loads or an AC export system also known as. Then a grid connected system with some loads. Systems with battery backup and electrical appliances as well, etc. etc. For now we're going to select the grid type system with loads. The bottom left is where you set up your climate data. This is very important as PVSOL will use the climate data to simulate the PV system. So here we've selected South Africa and we've selected our um, location where the PV system is going to be. If the system is not the location is not already in the drop-down box, you can add the location by clicking on a little globe to the right or right side of the drop-down box uh, and select from a map where the system will be installed. To the right, you set up the AC mains. In this case, it's a single phase 230 volt system that we're looking at. The next step is to specify the consumption information. Let's go to the next uh, icon, consumption. Here you can enter consumption information in a couple of different ways. If you go to add consumption, you'll see there's load profiles or individual appliances, monthly annual consumption or surplus consumption. So let's start with load profiles. On the load profiles, there's a number of predefined load profiles that's already in the system that one can use. You can also uh, add load profiles from day profiles. The day profiles, how that works is each hour of the day is represented by a certain percentage. So let's say between 10 and 11, we use 4% or 10 and 11, we use 5.4%. Uh, 47% of our daily consumption. So you can specify per hour what percentage of the daily consumption is used. You can even go further and specify it for winter weekdays, winter Saturdays, winter Sundays, spring weekdays, Sundays, Saturdays, etc. So you can very finely define your load profile over here. It can be a quite a tedious task. Then you can also specify individual appliances. Here you can, for instance, specify, uh, in this case, a computer, and you can specify when the computer is on, what, uh, what hour of the day, what day of the week, and then even what day of the year. And then you also need to specify the power of the um, computer. So this is even more tedious because you will need to specify it for each and every component uh, or appliance that you use. Probably the best way is to add a load profile from measured values. And here you can actually import a load profile from a logger that you've installed over a period of time. Now in this case, I'm just going to import a um, simple file. So in this case, I've got hourly values. So my interval is 60 minutes, 365 days, um, my unit is kilowatt, and the format of the data, and then if I, if I, um, okay, 
then the data is imported and then I've got my load profile into the system. So this is probably the, the easiest and more accurate way of um, adding a load profile. The next step is to enter our building information. Here we go to the 3D design step. If you go to edit, you'll see that PVSol offers you a couple of different options. Some of the options uh, are a map section. A max map section can be a uh, overhead plan of your roof plan of your building. It can be a drone image. It can be a Google Earth image, etc. Anything that you import from externally first need to be scaled in PV uh, saw. Another option is an imported 3D model, normally supplied by your architect of the building. That's a very uh, good and accurate way of um, entering a building. You can enter simple roof areas, more complex buildings, and so forth. So for now, I'm going to enter a building with a cable roof, and I click on Start. So yes, there's our building. On the right hand side, you'll see the orientation south on the top side, north would be then at the bottom side. So this building can be edited. Um, so let's say we want to make it a bit bigger, 15 meter wide, or the roof and the, the building itself. I can also take this building, I can uh, copy it, now I've got two buildings. So let's say this one, I want to orientate a bit differently, or I mean I can edit it, and I'll make that one 90 degrees. Um, so what you can also do is now to integrate the two buildings together. You've got something like that. Now, if we look at the building, we've got building like that. If you hover your mouse over the roof areas or any area, it will see it will highlight. So you can now use these highlighted areas to enter, uh, to, to add your PV modules and, and so forth. So let's, let's go and add some modules to, um, let's say for instance, um, this roof. I've activated this roof. The next step uh, from the menu there is module coverage. So here I can select from a database of modules. Um, on the left hand side is a manufacturer, so there's a whole list of, of uh, modules. I'm just going to randomly, randomly select a um, manufacturer, JS Solar. And let's say we're going to use a um, 285 watt module. You can specify vertical or horizontal as well. Okay, so now the option uh, would be to add the module. So you can add the individual module to your roof. The moment the module becomes green, you can actually add it to the roof. But you can also do other things. Um, if you go back to the object view, you can enter a um, area around the building, around the roof, we don't want to install. So let's say we want to keep open about 300 millimeters or 400 millimeters around the roof. So now you will not be able to install a PV module in that um, barred area. Going back to module coverage, another way is to fill an area. Here you specify the horizontal and vertical distance between modules, normally that will be your clamp size. And then you can use your mouse and you can drag a number of modules onto your roof. So in this case, I'm going to put about 5 kilowatt on. We can also move it around a little bit. And you can do a shading analysis by clicking on the shade frequency there. So yeah, PV saw will do a shading analysis over one full year and it will per module indicate any um, shading that you might have. So here you can see that this little, this one module will have a little bit of shading um, 
over the year. So what one can do and to alleviate a little bit is to move your modules to a place where it's a bit better. Obviously if you have trees or other buildings your shading might be much more severe and there you might need to um, look at other options to eliminate excessive shading. Once the modules are on we can move on to the next step which is module configuration. This is basically where you select the inverter. So I'm going to select my inverter. In this case, um, I'm going to add a new inverter. And I want um, to add one inverter. And then once again, I'm going to select from a database. I'm going to use the SMA inverter. And I'm going to use about a 4 kilowatt SMA inverter. Um, so this inverter has got two MPP trackers. And we can now specify how many modules per track. And I can see we've got 18 modules. So we can have one string of nine modules maybe. Um, if you click on this button, it will give you the limits. So one string up to 13 modules. So we can't put all our modules in one string. But we can have two strings of, um, let's say, one string of nine. And then on the other MPPT, we've got also one string of, of nine modules. Now, you'll notice that there's a little green arrow next to the MPP tracker. If you click on it, it will show you the minimum and maximum voltages. You can see it's nicely within the inverter's range. Uh, open circuit voltage is lower than the maximum voltage of 600 volt. Current is, is lower, etc. You'll also see that there's a yellow uh, check mark next to the inverter itself. Now, the yellow check mark tells us that uh, uh, the, the reason why it's yellow is the design factor is 128%. So, in other words, the inverter is a little bit undersized for the PV modules, um, but it's still within a tolerance range. Um, so, it's normally accept acceptable. Most inverters will allow up to 150% uh, factor. So now it is all assigned each module to an MPP tracker. Um, if you don't like the way that is uh, arranged there, we can also go to the left here and arrange it horizontally. Um, so that your modules sits in that uh, each, each uh, row will, uh, will be represent one MPP tracker. All right, the next step is, uh, first of all, you will see, you'll notice that each module has a unique number. That number shows you the inverter number, the MPPT number, the string number, and the module number. The next step is the cable plan. The cable plan um, here you can see how the, the string is organized. So let's say we want to go into the roof uh, somewhere and there I'm going to enter put a grommet there. I'm going to put a grommet. Let's say we're going to go into the roof there. That's where we enter the roof. Then I can right click on this uh, string and I say cable this string to cable grommet 1. And I can do the same with the second string cable it to cable grommet 1. And um, it will arrange it like this. You can also move it a little bit. Let's say we want to make it a meter like that. The nice thing about this is that it will tell you how much cable you need. But remember, this is only going to be up to where you enter the roof. So what you can also do is on the grommet, if you right click on a grommet, um, and we edit it, you can tell it how far is this grommet from the inverter. So let's say this grommet is 12 meters from the inverter. Um, if we now click on the cable list, it will add the 12 meters to the strings and you'll see that you need 31 meter positive cable and 48 meter negative cable. If you go back to the ter terrain view, you can uh, 
view our um, our roof from different angles. We can move it around a little bit. We can move it, get an over it view, um, and uh, maybe a southeast view, etc., etc. Right. So let's move on to the next section. When you exit the 3D design, you will notice that it will ask you if you want if this data should be adopted into PVSaw. If you say no, you will lose all your information. If you say cancel, you will go back to 3D design. So if you want to go out and you want to save your information, you enter, click on yes. It will ask you to determine shading. So let's say yes, okay there. Then it will do a shading analysis um, over a period of a whole year for you. Right, um, next step is cables. So, first of all, when you open it, you can enter your cable losses in detail or the total loss. So, I'm going to go for detail. Um, on the top, you'll see that it will show you the string layout of your building, a single line diagram. First string, second string into the inverter going to your uh, load. So normally uh, what we want to do, we want to add a couple of, of uh, things. So we want to feed into the grid, so I'm going to add a feed in meter. I'm going to click on that there, so it shows me a feed in meter. Um, then I also want to specify my cable length from the meter to the inverter. So let's say that is a 12 meter cable and if I click on a little calculator it tells me a 4 millimeter square cable that I need. Then um, I want to add some symbols after the inverter. I want to add a isolator after the inverter so I click on add a symbol there and it will open a list of symbols. I want to add in an isolator or a load break switch. I also want to add a circuit breaker. Um, Okay, so now you can see there's an isolator after inverter and a circuit breaker and PVSaw will size the circuit breaker according to the cable thickness and distance. Right. Then if you go to the DC side, uh, MPP tracker 1, let's say there we want to first of all specify the length from the um, string cable from the modules to the inverter and back. So this guys, I'm gonna let's say it's gonna be um, 25 meters. If you click on a little calculator, it tells me I need a two and a half millimeter square cable. You can also override it to a bigger size. And then to the right, it will tell you the loss in your cable, 0.35 percent loss, which is not too bad. Uh, also, I want to add um, an isolator into my string. So there I'm going to add an isolator and I want to add some search protection. Um, so let's see where's the search protection. So there you can see it's my isolator and search protection. I can also um, do it for the second string by just clicking on this arrow apply for all MPP trackers and then I've got it on all my trackers. So in total we can see that uh, PVSaw will, will specify the losses for us. Cable loss is 0.35% um, and loss of inverters on the right hand side 0.79%. All of this at standard test conditions. Right, so the next step is to go to my plan section where it shows you the single line diagram. You can export it to different formats. You can also look at the overview plan of your roof. Um, you can look at the detailed dimensions, string plan of, of the system and parts list. The next section we're going to look at is the financial parameters. Um, 
First of all, we're going to look at the economic parameters. So if I click on edit, it will open up a little box. First step there is to enter the assessment period, the period over which time you're going to assess your system. In this case, we're going to select 20 years. The annual average return on capital employed. This is a figure that you normally get from a company. And that's basically a threshold uh, where the investment might become viable for them. For instance, if the company can get 5% interest on the money that they've got available, but your system only return 3%, then it's better for them to keep their money in the bank and not install the system. But if your system can return 10%, it's better than the 5% that they can get in the bank and the investment might become viable. So in this case, um, I'm going to enter a value of 5% there. Then income and expenditure is where you specify the cost of the system, outgoing cost, uh, maintenance cost, etc. annually and, and subsidies where it's applicable. So in this case, uh, I'm going to select a non-tax deductible cost because it's a private uh, house. If it was a company, it would be most probably tax deductible. Cost of the system uh, in rand, in this case, we're going to say 10,000 at the uh, kilowatt peak or 50,000 in total. I'm going to allow for 1,000 rand outgoing annual operation cost. And um, there's no subsidies and so forth. I also allow for a 5% inflation on my annual operation cost. Going to the next step is specify a loan. So in this case, I'm not going to specify a loan, but PVSOL will allow you to specify up to three different loans. Each loan can have a different payback period and a different interest rate, etc. Then finally, um, we can select if we want to allow for tax or not. Now normally a company can depreciate their system in the first year under certain conditions. So a company you would say allow for tax, put in a tax rate, put in a depreciation period of one year. A private individual unfortunately cannot do that. So in this case, I'm not gonna allow for tax. Then we need to specify the type of system. So the options there are surplus feeding systems or net metering. Surplus feeding is where any excess PV will be fed back into the grid. Um, or throttle back and then net metering is only applicable where the municipality allow you to offset any power that you feed into the grid from power that you buy from the grid. So in the case of a surplus feed-in system you need to enter two tariffs. The one is a feed-in tariff. So I've, I've just selected the Cape Town feed-in tariff uh, as an example. Cape Town feed-in tariff um, if you look at uh, the tariff, it's, it's about 84 cents a kilowatt hour that they pay you to feed power into the grid. Then we also have a from grid tariff. Now the from grid tariff, I also selected the city of Cape Town SSEG tariff. And um, if I open it up, you can see it's a block tariff from 0 to 600 at a certain rate, 2 rand 11, and then it goes up to 2 rand 91. And there's also a 260 rand a month fixed cost. Tariffs can be customized and you can add your own tariffs. Uh, each municipality will have a different structure. Um, so a different video will show you how to add tariffs to your system. What you can also do is to specify inflation rate for, for tariffs. So in this case, I've allowed 5% inflation on the in feeding tariff and 8% inflation on the from grid tariff. So after we've entered all the tariffs, we are basically ready to simulate our PV system. To simulate the PV system, we click on a little calculator icon and it will simulate the system and give you a summary screen. So on the left there, you get a financial analysis where you get a total rate of return of almost 40%, which is pretty amazing. Uh, revenue or savings, about 17,000 rand per year, and a crude cash flow of 373,000 rand. Not bad on an investment of 50,000 rand. Then AC side, how much energy per year is generated, 7,800 kilowatt hour per year generated, specific annual yield, 1,500 kilowatt hours, 
a kilo peak. It also gives you a couple of graphs that's interesting. So let's look at the use of PV energy. The orange part shows you how much uh, PV is generated. And the gray part tells you how much of it you use. And the blue part is how much of it you feed back into the grid. And this is per month. Then the coverage of consumption shows you of the consumption, which is gray, how much is covered by PV and how much is covered by grid. So in this case, we can see that our consumption coverage is not, not too bad, actually. If you click on that simulation um, item on the left, you'll get these graphs. The first one is own power consumption, 65%. Now we're at 65% of um, the PV power you use directly. The rest will go to the grid. And 73% solar fraction. In other words, your, your uh, consumption is covered 73.6% by PV. Your level of self-sufficiency, in other words, 73.6%. Right. Um, there's a couple of different um, options on the left that you can uh, also look at. Let's look at the energy flow graph. This graph shows you what energy gets generated, how much goes to your load, how much goes to the grid, how much comes from the grid. Then uh, there's all these different graphs that we've already looked at. You can also look at the system balance and this shows you all the losses in your system as a percentage and, and as an actual value. And here you can see that um, if there's areas where there's excessive losses, you can maybe uh, use this information to optimize your system. Then financial analysis is where all the financial data get, comes together. So there's a summary, 20 year assessment period. Um, so your return on the system is a pretty good 39%. Your amortization period, 3.2 years. So after 3.2 years, your system is paid off. And your production cost is only 69 cents a kilowatt hour on your PV. Um, this is with a once off payment of 50,000 Rand and annual cost of 1,000 Rand a year. Yeah, you can see the payment that you get from your utility of the year in, in the first year, the savings. Uh, you can get the detail on, on the tariffs, etc. Cash flow is a 20 year or 21 year, depends on the period you selected, shows you your cash flow. So the first year you've got a um, your 50,000 that you pay for a system um, and you're still a negative. And you can see here on year four, you're starting to get into positive territory. So the crude cash flow, you see after the third year you break even and then from there on you save quite a substantial amount of money. And then lastly, you get the development of energy cost. So the blue line is what you would pay with not installing the system over the years. And the orange line is what you now will pay with your PV system over the years. And you can see the substantial amount of savings that you get over, over time. Then lastly is the presentation. And this is the report that you can either present to your customer um, or to a financial inst institution, etc. The presentation or the report is fully customizable, so you can uh, select what you want to be part of this uh, presentation and um, what not. So you can also export it as a Word or a PDF document. And it gives you a very nice professional report on, on your system. You can specify if you want to include financial parameters or you can even add your data uh, sheets to it, etc. So in the customer presentation, um, if you click on further options, you can see there's a whole host of systems uh, options that you can either include or exclude from your report for your customer. This then concludes uh, the brief overview of uh, using PV Sol in an application, to simulate the application. Some other videos will, will go into more detail on 
adding tariffs and then also on importing external images into PVSOL 3D system. In this video, we're going to look at one of the newer features of PVSOL Premium. Uh, a lot of new inverters have a feature where any excess PV can be redirected to a specific load. Um, for instance, a swimming pool pump or a uh, aircon unit, something like that. So in PVSOL, how they make provision for that is under consumption. If you look at the add consumption uh, button, if you um, click it open, you'll see there's an option for surplus consumption. Now in the surplus consumption, you can now define the type of consumption. If it's a constant load, like in this case, a pool pump, uh, which is a 750 watt pump. Uh, so if you define this, then at any time when there's excess PV higher than 750 watt, that output will be uh, switched on and the pump will, will be uh, switched on at that time. There's also an option for a dynamic um, load where there's a maximum power and a minimum power. Um, so typically that might be something like a, a fridge or so on that, um, that sometimes switches on the compressor and sometimes switches off the compressor. So how this will play out in the simulation. So let's, let's go to the simulation. And if I go to the diagram editor, which is also quite a nice feature of uh, PVSOL, is where you can uh, draw time series of a lot of different parameters. There's a whole list of parameters that one can, can add. So in this case, I've added our consumption in red, the surplus consumption. This is now when there's surplus consumption in blue, and I've also in green list the PV energy that's get generated. Okay. So looking at this graph, and this is now for one week in January, you can see PV is in general uh, higher than the load. And there you can see at that point where there's excess PV, that surplus load is switched on, our pool pump is switched on. And then when the PV now is not enough anymore, the pump will actually switch off. You can also see here on this day where the sun is maybe not as bright, the pump shoots on for a short while and then there's not enough PV and it shoots off again. So it's not a guaranteed output, but it's a good way to uh, make use of excess uh, consumption. Uh, some units will allow you to redirect that to a, a geyser or a, a unit that can warm your water or preheat your water and so on, so that you can make optimal use of your, your PV energy and increase your self-consumption. If we look at the simulation, uh, we can see that in this case, our own power consumption is now 77.6% and the solar fraction is 76.7%. If I remove that load, that surplus load, and do the simulation again, we can have a look at, see what the own consumption is now. So now we can see that our own consumption is only 65%. So by adding that, that uh, excess load, we could increase our consumption by about 10%. In this video, we're gonna look at tariffs. How to add your own tariffs. Um, so let's, add it from grid tariff and there's different types of tariffs that one can add so the most simple tariff that one can add is a straightforward fixed price per kilowatt hour tariff so i'm going to select a new uh, tariff country south africa the city i can specify let's say it is um, johannesburg and this is a plier I can select um, city power. If it's not already there, you can add suppliers. And I can call this tariff, let's say, sample um, fixed, fixed price tariff. 
Right. Now on the right hand side, I can actually specify the tariff. Uh, in this case, let's say we were paying there two rand fifty per kilowatt hour. Fixed price two rand fifty. You can also add a base price because sometimes suppliers will charge you a fixed price per month. So let's say there's a base price of 150 rand per month, and that is that's it. So that tariff you can then add, and it's available. A bit more complex tariff. I'm going to add a new one again. Is a block tariff or an inclined block tariff. So an example of of that would be. A tariff where there's um, for a certain block, say up to a certain kilowatt hour, you pay a price, and then if you use more, you normally pay a higher price. Um, and then there can also be a fixed price per month. So let's add a block tariff. So once again, I'm gonna select um, City Johannesburg and City Power, and let's Take that sample block. Block that. Okay, so from zero kilowatt hours, let's say we pay uh, two rand forty, and then I can add another line. So then from six hundred and one, so it's basically zero to six hundred will be two and forty, and then from six hundred and one upwards, we might pay three rand thirty one. And so you can add uh, more blocks if, if there are more blocks uh, from your supplier. You can also then add your fixed price there. Right, so the more complex types of tariffs um, is where you've got time of use uh, tariffs. And I'll give you an example of a time of use tariff. And uh, this is typical of some of the ESCOM tariffs where there's actually six different um, tariffs almost there's a low demand season which is basically the summer months and then there's high demand season June to August now in in the, each season there's three tariffs there's a uh, or three time periods a Sunday time period a Saturday time period and a weekday time period and, and each one of those time periods have different either peak standard or off peak tariffs so you can see that it can become quite a, a complex situation. So, how do you handle that in, in, in PV uh, saw? For this, I'm going to open a uh, project that uh, I've already done. So, let's go to that quickly. And I'll show you how you implement a tariff like that in PVSol. Right, so there I've got a City of Chuane Industrial uh, 2021 tariff. If I select it um, and edit it by double clicking on that line, you can now see um, that. Yeah, we defined six different tariff periods, which would be high season, peak time, high season, standard time, high season, off peak time, and then low season, peak, low season, standard, low season, off. The tariff period one, for instance, is 139. This would be low season, peak, period, uh, peak tariff. Then 121, a bit cheaper, is low season, standard tariff, and then 86 cents is low season uh, of peak tariff. High season peak tariff, tariff 4, is 4 and 70. That's a very expensive tariff. And then high season standard is 180, and high season um, off peak is 103 cents. So those are the different tariffs that's applicable. Now you can, at the bottom here, we can now assign those tariffs for the different. Um, uh, either peak, off peak, or standard. So, in this case, we've defined three tariff periods, which is peak, standard, and off peak. So, 
A would be peak, B would be standard, and C would be off peak. So under tariff A, we can now define per hour, per day of the year, if it's either uh, which one of those tariff periods apply. So if we look at uh, January up to May, which is our stand, uh, uh, off low season uh, time, then up to five o'clock in the morning, it's tariff three, which is our low season, our low season of big tariff, 86 cent. Then from six to eight, it's our low season, um, actually six o'clock, it's our low season standard time. Then from seven to nine is our low season peak time, which is um, tariff period one, which is 193. And then from 10 to five, it's again standard time, peak time again from uh, six to seven in the evening and so forth. That's now for weekdays. For Saturdays, you can see it's a bit different. There's only two tariffs, there's either off-peak or standard time. And then for Sundays, it's just basically off-peak time. Right, now for winter period, June to, to August, there it's uh, up to five o'clock is our high season, our peak season, um, off-peak tariff, which is the cheapest tariff for that period. But then from six o'clock to nine o'clock is tariff four. And tariff four is that four and seventy. That's our uh, high demand season peak tariff and so forth. So you can per hour, per day of the year define which tariff is applicable. And then obviously PVSO when it simulates the system will um, base the savings on the time period and the tariff applicable to that time period. In this video we're going to look at one of the more advanced features of PVSOL in terms of getting a building into your, your system to simulate. Um, from in this case, we're going to actually use a map section and we're going to import a, a roof plan from externally. So, load from hard drive, so I'll click on that. Uh, and from there, I'm going to import a drawing of a, of a roof. And there's my drawing. Okay, so obviously, PVSOL would not have an idea of the scale of this drawing. Uh, so we need to tell PVSOL what the scale is. And therefore, we can either, if you know, we can put in the pixels per meter and orientation, or we can go click on this gear and we can actually scale it in PVSOL. Now on this plan, this is an overhead roof plan of a building. You can see there are some dimensions. And for instance, there's a 49.47 meters which is the length of the perimeter of this uh, stand. Now to scale this in PV soil, you'll notice that there's a blue line on top there. So I take that blue line and I overlay it on a, over a known distance. Uh, take that there and put the other point on the edge of that perimeter. And we know that that distance is 49.47, so at the length of the line measured, I put in 49.47 meters and then immediately it works out the pixels uh, per meter 37 pixels per meter and I can click on OK. So now the building is scaled and I can uh, start working with it further. The other thing that, that one needs to notice though is that the orientation might not be uh, depending on the image that you input it might not always be north on top. In this case, we can see that north is actually uh, here on the bottom left hand side. So I also need to orientate my drawing correctly for north because south is at the bottom, north at the top at this, this stage. So I'll go to terrain view, um, go to overhead view, look from, from on top, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna 
an editor's plan of mine and I put my orientation and I think it's 295 degrees so that north is on top. Now the building, the drawing is scaled and the drawing is orientated where north corresponds to the PV saw north, which is very important. Right, still a flat 2D image, so to make a 3D image from it, we need to do a couple of things. Um, for that, I'm going to go to Object View, and I need to define roof areas that I can extrude in a 3D way. So the way to do that is there's a menu option there under Object View which says Sketch a 3D Polygon. So I'm going to draw polygons over specific roof areas and I'm not going to do the whole roof I'm just I'll do a few portions of it just to show you how it works so I click on that polygon I get a little pencil and then I draw my polygon over the roof so I'm gonna do this triangle portion of the roof and you can actually zoom nicely in to get it nice and accurate and the more time you spend here obviously the better it's going to be so after each polygon, you need to click on the polygon again to take the pencil away. So there is a polygon, and you can see on the left-hand side, there's polygon one defined. Right, let's do a few more. So click on polygon again. Do this area. Right, so there's that, that portion of the roof. I'll do one last one for now. Okay, and there's that polygon. So I've got my three polygons. Now I can extrude it in 3D. Now, to be able to do that, you need to know a couple of things. You need to know the slope of the roof and you need to know the height of the eaves. The eaves is the lowest portion of the roof. So I'm going to extrude 3D object. And now I normally just select an arbitrary building as my object. Give it a height, the height of the eaves. And in this case, it's three meters. And if I edit, I can now define the slope. Now the slope of this roof is 25 degrees and the reference edge here is edge free. Now edge free is the lowest edge, so the reference edge is always the, low, the lowest edge so where the roof slopes towards. Um, so that three meters, the lowest portion of the roof is edge free, which is fine. Then I can do it for a second polygon, extrude 3D object, Object building, my height is 3 meters. I edit it once again. It is a uh, 25 degree roof, but my reference edge is edge 3. So I need to select edge 3 because it slopes towards edge 3. Right, and then the last one is that one that I'm going to do, except for the object. Arbitrary building, 3 meters, and I edit it, um, 25 degrees, and it slopes towards edge 4. Right, so there I've got my three roof areas now. I can also um, go and change the texture of that roof and the top surface. I'm going to say it's a tile roof. surface of tile roof right and then I can uh, go back to terrain view and uh, let's look at a north view of the building and uh, we can look at a East view, for instance, or a west view. In this case, I think northwest. You can see there is my building. Uh, let's get southwest. 
So you can see these your whole building. So obviously I didn't extrude the whole building, just to give you an example. Then um, to be able to use these buildings, you can see if you hover your mouse over it, it highlights the roof. So let's say we want to put PV modules in that roof. I can right click on it, activate the roof. And then I can go to module coverage and add my modules onto this roof. 